Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm Document Geek, and I am. Um, I like to do experiments with patterns. And uh, lately, I've been experimenting with blending modes and different um, objects right in InDesign, not using any plugins or um, you know Illustrator or anything like that, but just using the straight out of the box tools from InDesign. And um, I made these um, these patterns lately, and I uh, I wanted to share with you a little bit about how I made them. So first I'm going to make a um, just a small concentric uh, small circle. I'm going to take off the, um, the stroke and the fill. We're pressing the slash key. That'll remove the fill and then press shift X um, to swap the fill and the stroke and then press the slash key again and that'll just give me a, a blank uh, ellipse. I'm going to give it a stroke color of yellow and I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit. I'm going to give it a, a gap color here in the stroke panel. Actually, in order to give it a gap color, you have to change the stroke style to something else. I'm going to choose white diamond. And I'm going to get a, bit, a gap color of um, this nice hyperlink color that comes built in with InDesign. Now, I, I want to make some concentric circles here. Uh, first, I'm going I'm to bump up the... Um, the stroke weight a little bit. I'm going to do, there we go, I'll do 18. Now whenever I, um, I can copy and paste this, so I'm going to copy and then paste in place, and that gives me two, uh, two objects here. Now, <clears throat> you can increase the size of your objects by just hitting the command period key. But you notice the number of diamonds starts changing, and I don't want that. And so the reason for that is because I have um, adjust stroke weight when scaling turned off. And so it doesn't matter how, you know, how big um, as far as the width and height that I make this, it's still going to be 18 points. Right? It doesn't matter how big I make this object, it's just going to keep the stroke weight the same and it's just going to add more diamonds. And the reason for that is that InDesign has got some sort of a built-in um, algorithm that, that will um, always keep the shape of the the diamonds relatively the same. It'll stretch them just a little bit, just enough until I can fit in more diamonds. But that's not what I want. I want to have uh, the number of diamonds stay the same no matter how big the circle gets. And in order to do that, the proportion of the circle and the stroke weight has to remain the same from small to large. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to copy. Copy and then paste in place. And I'm going to go back up here and turn adjust stroke weight when scaling on. And so now when I increase the size of this, you'll notice over here that the stroke weight, it gets bigger. And the size of the diamonds remains the same. So I want to um, make sure that I have, I'm going to make a whole bunch of concentric circles and I want to make sure that the, um, the number of, um, the, the width in between them is the same. So I'm going to press command period 10 times. And then I'm going to copy that larger circle, paste in place, and then press command period another 10 times. And I'm going to do that, oh, a few times. All right, so I've got <clears throat> I've got all these concentric circles, and um, I like to, when I'm doing work like this. I like to keep the layers panel up so I can easily um, you know target which one that I want. Uh, right now they're all selected, and so all of the you know the red dots were um, highlighted. But now you can choose which one in the stacking order that you want. Like that one will be the one at the bottom will be obviously the smallest circle at the bottom, and the, the if you click the one at the top, it'll be the largest one on the outside. 
or on the top. So now I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to go to the effects panel and I'm, um, I'm going to start playing with the blending mode. <clears throat> and I'm not going to be clicking here, I'm just going to be scrolling. I have a, um, a roller type mouse um, that's got a rolling scroll wheel on it. And so um, if you've ever accidentally scrolled over something and without clicking their things change on your page it's because of something that I like to call hover scrolling and normally I absolutely hate this function but for doing work like this it's kinda handy that I don't have to click and um, you know go to the drop down and then click and go to the next drop down I can just simply hover over the um, the drop down menu and um, start to scroll and it'll automatically change And so you can also play with the the transparency and get some interesting effects. Now this is again it's just two colors, yellow um, stroke with a, a blue gap. I'm gonna put it back to 100, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna change it to that one's kind of nice. So now I can, um, <clears throat> because I have them all selected, I can change the stroke color to something else, and it's going to change. Uh, it's going to change the way the um, the transparency affects the um, the different interactions of the colors. I think I like that pink one. I can also go in and change the um, the gap color here to something else, and the only things that are going to show up in this this drop down here are, are uh, actual swatches. So if you want a color, a different gap color um, to show up in this, you're going to actually have to create it as a swatch. You can't just use the, um, the um, color picker for that. That's kind of pretty. Now this has a gap color of none. I like that one. But now I want to go in and um, make um, a little bit of variation. So I'm going to select, um, I'm going to select every other, um, every other object. And if you um, select one using these little dots here and then shift click on another dot, it'll let you select multiple. Um, multiple objects and so now I've got every other one selected and I'm going to change the gap color uh, or the stroke color to yellow or maybe to pink um, and again you can have you know like an infinite number of possibilities here based on the um, you know whatever you whatever you choose for your your effect um, blending mode and your opacity and um, it's kind of fun to play around So now, um, <clears throat> this is just what you can do with the, the white diamond pattern. What's interesting about this is because the, we've got all of the, the stroke weight um, in proportion with the, um, the width and height. We can change the stroke, uh, the stroke style. Whoops. I'm going to select those all again, and I'm going to change the stroke style. And the same thing will happen with the um, the number of shapes going around the um, the ellipses. They'll remain the same.
So I think I want to take all these white ones and change them to some other color. And I have all the white ones. Uh, they used to be white, now they're red. All the red um, strokes selected. And um, it's interesting that you can mix um, like every other every other stroke to have a different um, a different shape. Like half of them are diamonds now, and half of them are um, are ellipses. But the proportions of them all are are still the same and so we still have this interesting concentric effect like here up at the top it looks sort of like there's cones um, cones going down um, and then sort of like like bubbles coming up through the top here so I hope that you've um, enjoyed and <clears throat> enjoyed this and learned something about how you can make interesting interesting patterns in InDesign just using um, blending modes and um, <clears throat> and built-in tools. It's uh, kind of a fun experiment if your brain is tired and you just need a break from technical work like I do um, just to come in and um, do a little experimentation and make some interesting patterns. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and again my name is Kelly Vaughn and I am Document Geek.